when we click on this URL now, you'll see that the site is hosted. Okay, so you have this URL right here. The site is hosted directly on this URL. You can share this site with your friends. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is Yagesh Bhopri, and today is going to be a tutorial about web development. We'll be covering entire topic from HTML, CSS and JavaScript basics, creating our own websites and deploying them using GitHub, right? Uh, and in this video, I'll also give you an introduction to web development, like what it is, what are, what are client server models, like what is front end, what is back end. I'll give you a basic idea and then we'll go on to the coding part as well. So just sit back and relax and it's fine if you don't know anything, I'll be teaching you from the very basics, okay? So I guess that's enough for introduction and let's get started. So let's actually discuss what we will cover. What is internet like World Wide Web? What exactly is it? The client server model uses of HTML, CSS and JavaScript, right? Individually, what are they used for? We all know that websites are built using these three, but what is the difference, right? Why each of them are used? We'll see that, that difference, right? Then we'll go on to the coding part and we'll discuss how to create a site using HTML. In the next part of this video, we'll also add in CSS. And in the next part, we'll also use JavaScript as well. So by the end of this three part course, you'll be able to create your own website using HTML, CSS and JavaScript, dynamic websites, all right? And last, lastly, the most interesting of all, you'll be able to deploy the project that you created on the internet using GitHub entirely for free. Okay, if you don't know what GitHub is, if you don't know how to use GitHub, that's entirely fine because I will be teaching you how to do that as well in this in this video itself. Okay, so I think it's going to be a very, it's going to be a very interesting video. If you think so as well, just sit back and watch the whole video. Okay, so without any further delay, let's get started. So our first topic is what is internet? The World Wide Web, right? We all know the full form of WWW, but what exactly is it? So in simple language, it is basically the connection of all these computers all around the world, right? It connects all these computers, regardless of the distance between them. So how is it useful, right? So it uh, facilitates large distance communication. I'm sorry for the <laughs> spacing mistake, but yeah. So you can talk with someone from India with like, for example, you can talk with someone who is in, uh, overseas, regardless of your distance between them, right? So it, yeah, it's very easy to communicate over large distances because of the internet. Uh, then again, you can share data, you can share files with ease, regardless of where you are located. The third is you can also uh, search things, right? You can get knowledge, get resources, get data on it. The internet has all these websites which share with you all these resources for free, right? So it allows you to access all this information, basic functionalities of the internet, but it's so powerful, right? Communication, sharing files and getting data. It's so, so important that it has become possible for us to live without it in our daily lives, right? So that that is what internet is. That's how powerful internet is. Now. We talked about in the last point, I said this term websites, right? So what exactly is websites? How do we create them? That is what we'll talk about next. So what is web development, right? So creating these websites, right? On a on the World Wide Web or for a personal or private network, which is called intranet is basically web development. Okay, creating these sites. Now in web development, you'll get these terms. You'll get to hear these terms, clients and servers. So what exactly are these, right? Are just basically devices, okay? Devices, computers, software. Clients is basically you who is accessing or using the device to serve the internet. That is client. Now server is a computer or a software which is ad, which you don't have access to, which is something that responds to your requests. We'll talk about this in a bit more detail in the next slide, okay? So this is the basic flow of client and servers, the front end and the back end. Client is called the front end as well and the servers are called back end, okay? Let's take a look at this model in a little bit more detail, all right? So what happens is, these are the devices that you use to access internet, right? It can be any of these devices, that's fine. You see the website, you, when you go on the browser, when you 
go to google website you see the search bar you see uh, how am i mean if uh, i'm feeling lucky today you see your google account on the top right so that's the ui that's the user interface that the google has designed right that's the front end part right the part that you see that is basically the front end the client side the ui the user interface you can call it whatever you want but that's what this is the things that you see on these devices right now let's say that you clicked on a button right the button was something like it said i want details about a movie right so you wanted a details about a movie you click the button you expected to see the results the details of that movie but the details are not stored on the front end right you don't you have it stored somewhere in a database in a hard maybe in a hard drive a normal hard drive but that is not here so what happens is when the user clicks on this button a request is sent to the back end you don't see this happening this is not this is not something that you can see on the front end side this is not something that the user can see this is the this is the backstage part of what is happening behind uh, everything right so when the user clicks this button what happens is a request is sent to the back end right this back end is a computer like this a powerful computer if it's a big organization or just a normal computer right or a software that responds to such requests now it can re respond in different way let's suppose that this website uh, asks the user for login for any kind of information and if it's not then let's say the user is not logged in and he presses this button and when the request is sent to this backend what it will do is it will say it will give back a response it will say that user is not logged in so first login for first let the user log in and then he will get access to the data so now let's say you log in after that right now you are logged in and when you press this button again the movie button right so what will happen is now the back end it will receive that request it will process that yes the user is logged in it is that user is verified he or she is in our database right now after that verification now it will serve that request right so the request for for this movie now this backend will request this data from the back uh, from the database right this is also part of the backend so for uh, the data the movie's data is stored in our database it will take that data it will come back to the backend and this backend will now send this data back as the response to the request so this is how client and server communicate for every request that is sent for every interaction the user creates right so this is basically what a client server model is this communication which happens and these requests this communication between client and front end the model is client server model but these these requests are that are being sent this communication happens with what is called an api this process is called an api this communication process is is facilitated by APIs, right? So it's not a complicated, it's just a term, right? For example, if you are in a restaurant, right? When you order something, a waiter communicates between you and the chef, the kitchen, right? So you, uh, you as always are the front end. The waiter here is the API and the kitchen is the back end. That's a very uh, famous example in this uh, model, right? so that is basically the client's model i won't go through this uh, <laughs> this text part because i've already explained this in a detail i believe in a much more detail i believe in the last slide right so let's directly go to the coding part like right let's actually talk about building that front end the part that the user sees right we want to create those websites ourselves that's what we are here today right that's what we are here to do so uh, let's first understand you must have heard these terms somewhere right html css and javascript you might have a basic idea of about, about what these are but let's assume that that you don't you just know that these are some programming languages that are used to create websites these are basically the building blocks of creating websites right these three are together used to create dynamic sites what does dynamic mean basically a site which changes or which responds to user interaction when i click the button something happens when i say something something happens when i scroll down something happens that's dynamic website static website is something that is just showing all the details already present it doesn't respond to the user changes right so those are static websites 
So you can create dynamic websites by using these three tech stacks, right? So actually, I'll just show you an example to better understand what each of these are used for. Okay, so let's go to a normal website first. Let's search for the Google site, right? Google.com. Let's go to the Google.com site. So now here, if you search for anything, let's just click on any top results. So this here, what you see is the UI, the user interface, the front end of this site, right? Now, there is something called the inspect mode. Yeah, this is something that you'll be using a lot if you're a developer, which you are, right? So this basically shows you each of the elements, right? You can see when I scroll down, it will highlight the elements that each of these corresponds to. But this is not important. This is the HTML that uh, it's written, right? But for now, to make it more clear, what I'll do is this head tag that you see here, right? I'll zoom in for you guys to see this head tag. What I'll do is I'll just delete that. So now you'll see that a lot of the styling is removed. Right. So this is what happens when CSS is removed. What CSS is doing is giving this uh, site, this structure, a style to make it more stylish. Right. That's what CSS is used for. Now, what HTML does is it just gives the structure that this is the text that is to show you. For example, this search results. Right. HTML is basically giving these structures that here, this is the text. This is this search bar. This is provided by HTML. Right. And we have to take the input from here. That is HTML, right? You'll have these divisions for this site, right? That is HTML. The basic structure of the site is defined by HTML. Now the CSS, if I reload the site again, the head element will be back and you will see the styling. That is CSS. So that's the basic difference between HTML and CSS. CS HTML is the structure. CSS is the style. Now next, what is JavaScript, right? So any button like this, this sign in button, when I click on it, if you don't have JavaScript, nothing will happen, right? So, but when I do, if the JavaScript is included, right? You all know what happens, right? You get this sign in window. So this interaction was controlled by using JavaScript, this dynamicness of authentication, right? It went to authent authent authentication. Each of these buttons, what happens when I click on each of these? JavaScript controls the logic, okay? So JavaScript uh, is basically that logic which controls all of this okay when i click on it you show all these images when i click on this image you fetch this recommendations javascript is very helpful for this okay so yeah that's what the basic difference is html is the structure css is the designing the styling and the javascript is the dynamicness for when user wants to interact with the site okay so yeah i guess that's the basic difference between all three text tags that you will be learning, right? So coming back, let's now actually get down and create our own site, right? So let's create a site ourselves. We'll create a simple HTML project that will also deploy so that you have a project that you can directly put in your resume. We'll start from the very scratch. I'll explain you every tag that I'll use, everything that happens on the screen, okay? So, so I have this empty folder open. I'll just create a new folder right here this will be html css and javascript for this three part series right and in this i'll write the project one okay project one let's name it html profile we'll be using only html we'll create a very simple site and it will be a user profile your own profile right so yeah and I'll open this in the Visual Studio code, right? If you don't have it installed, it's very simple to install. I'll, I already have a video about how to install Visual Studio code. So I'll directly open this first. Now, I'll first create a simple HTML file. What I mean is you can name it anything. You can name it profile.html. The main thing is you have to have this extension.html right or htm both of these represents the extension for html files okay for now i'll just write html to keep things simple okay now here we'll write all our code okay so first of all what we need to write uh 
for HTML, the full form of HTML is basically hypertext markup language, right? Uh, it's fine if you don't know it, but basically our websites, our browsers can't understand normal text language, right? So they need some special, some special kind of files. So that is basically what HTML is. So HTML is written in the basic building blocks of HTML are tags. Okay, what these tags are like, for example, we have, uh, there are some basic syntax that you have to follow. Like, for example, if I directly give the an h1 tag, what this basically tells is I want to create a heading, heading one, head, there are six different heading characters like h1, we have h2 tag, h3 tag all the way till h6. Now I'll direct, directly just type in something. This is heading one. And when I run this with live server, actually, if you don't know what live server is, if you don't know what, if you don't have it, so I, what I want you to do is first go to the extensions and search for live server. Okay. So the first one that you see this right here, you have to install it. What this does it, it creates a local servers to run your website on. And when you go back to your site now, open your project. And if you have installed it successfully, you will see this go live button on the bottom right corner. Right? You can use that or you can just right click on your code and click on open with live server, right? So this will basically open this index.html file right here in your browser. I'll just open this side by side. So what this will do is just directly open this side HTML HTML file in your browser. Okay. And any changes that you make, for example, if I remove this one, it will directly show that change here if you reload, right? Now, this is one thing live reload. See, this error is very interesting. Live reload is not possible without a head or body tag. I will tell you what that is. So what happens is I directly wrote the H1 and it is showing on a side. If I write H2, if I write H2, that is basically heading to it's a smaller size of the heading, right? Heading two. So if I reload the side again, you'll see a smaller heading is created. I'll zoom in this as well, right? This is what happens, but this is hard for our browsers to understand. You can directly see even the live server extension is giving the warning warning that you have to use head or body tag. So even if you don't use it, you will still be able to see the HTML file, but it will be very hard for our browsers, browsers to understand directly what this is. So there is a basic syntax that you have to follow whenever you're creating an HTML project. That is, you have to wrap everything in an HTML document. Okay. And even a better practice is to write the doc type HTML tag at the top. This is a self closing tag. You don't have to create a closing tag like this. Okay. So for now, I'll remove this to avoid confusion. Basically, HTML is based on uh, type tags like this. You have an opening tag, which is wrapped in this less than greater than sign. And you, you have the closing tag for the same. The closing tag basically is presented by this forward slash, right? So this HTML suggests that this whole code inside will be an HTML file, right? Now, you have, what you have to do is write two things. One is the head tag. Now, everything inside the head tag will not be visible to the user, okay? And the second will be the body tag. Now, this body tag consists of everything that is going to be shown in your website, okay? So it, now if I write H1, and write heading one. Now you will see that I don't have to reload this and it automatically shows because our extension now doesn't give an error because we have used the head and the body tag. This head and body tag is a proper way of creating an H, the HTML files. Okay, it's a correct syntax. It's make, it makes it easier for our browser, this Chrome, to understand what the different section of our HTML file represents. So it's better to follow the systematic way, right? So create, uh, write the HTML tag inside that create the head tag and the body tag right now if i write this again you'll again see i don't have to do anything else right all the changes are live okay you don't have to again and again open the file that's why we have installed this live server extension now before we go into creating this 
I'll tell you something about this head tag. Okay, this head tag comprises of metadata. Okay, the information about a site that is required but not seen by the user. Okay, the so uh, at the top you'll see right now this tab is showing this whole the same URL right here right at the top. But we don't want that. We want to name it something uh, like just our profile right maybe your name itself so what i'll write is in the head tag i'll use the title tag this will give uh, this will change that top heading right i'll just give it the name developer zone right okay so now you'll see that the title at the top is changed okay so so this is what the head tag does this kind of small information now other than the title there are other things as well so you have something called as meta tags okay meta tags like these what meta tags does is it's a self-closing tag so you don't have to write for example this body tag has a corresponding closing tag right there are some tags that don't need such kind of closing tags they just have uh they just close themselves these are called self-closing tags and meta is one of them right so meta basically uh, is basically the metadata of the site right it's the information about the site that is not required by the user it is it, it helps the browsers to get information about the site so there are a lot of meta tags but for now if you just write meta the vs code itself will give you all these uh syntax right so this this is a very important tag meta.vp this last one if you click on this it will basically give you this meta name is equal to viewport content is equal to width device and initial scale equals one this meta tag basically makes it easier for you for the site to be responsive on all devices right this is what this meta tag is used for there are meta tags for descriptions as well the esc so here in the description the meta tags have a very simple uh, syntax you give the meta tag then you provide the name of the tag right what do you want this name what exactly is this meta tag for so the last was for viewport this is the tag for description so the site description can be given in this then you have content right right so this name and content is what basically the attributes of meta tag okay now you can provide a content like this is my profile site for the tutorial series on the introduction to web development it's basically the description of the site this helps in the seo right the rankings of our site when in the search engines right it helps the browser to rank your site better right the better the description is okay there are a lot of the meta, there are a lot of meta tags that you can use there are also og tags which uh, basically tells that what exactly do you want to see when you share the link of this site right uh, but we'll talk about all that later so this is basically the metadata that user it's not visible to the user but it's it's important for the site rankings right then the title this is something that comes on the top now let's jump right down to creating what the user sees the main body of the website right so i've already provided this body tag now let's give this uh, let's, uh, let's give a heading first let's keep it simple for heading we have h1 through h6 right i already told you h1 through h6 are the heading tags right so, and h1 is the greatest uh, like the uh, largest heading size so let's and it's better to have only one h1 tag on your whole website then you can use h2 and h3 for um, just smaller head of smaller topics right so i'll just give this and my profile because that's what this site is that we are creating my profile and then what you can do is you also in tags you have something called as align as uh, attributes as well so when i provide an align attribute right here i can give it center so what it will do is it will bring the tag the h1 tag in the center of the device right you can directly provide that here you also have other attributes like the this pg color and when i write your any color like gray it will change the color the background color to gray right so there are different attributes that you can explore later for now we'll keep it simple right 
so we are given the title of a page next what we'll do is we'll create a simple div right div is nothing it uh, it's just basically it's a semantic that tag that basically helps you define that that's a different division this is a separate section of a page right so here we'll write let's say we'll give a h2 a heading like this is going to be section about me right this is going to be a about me section here we'll provide our basic uh, here we'll provide a basic description right so i'll just give the p tag p tag is simple a paragraph tag right we don't want it to be heading we just want it to be a simple paragraph if i write anything in this like this is a paragraph tag and you'll see that it's written normal line right so now i'll remove this and i'll directly copy some text that i've already written so as you can see this is updated i'll uh, uh, yeah i'll full screen this to show you the full screen view now let's say that you want a uh, some of this text like from here you want to write this in a next line right there are a number of ways to do it for example if i want to create a break here right i want to go it to the neck i want it to go to the next line right so i'll just write br right this is a self-closing tag again so as you can see it the text after it went to the next line so br text does that the other way is to directly create a new paragraph tag right for example if i remove this if i remove this or rather let's actually try it from here if i write the p tag and i cut the text and I directly write it inside this you'll see that it starts from the next line itself but the thing is the p tag or a uh, gives a padding between this the spacing is default by default the space that you see is by default with by using the p element if i instead i use the span tag it won't happen see the space is removed right so there are things like these right there are a number of ways to solve the same issue but for now for this case sake of learning a new tag i've introduced you to the br tag and i'll just write it again right here okay so i'll just write one or two paragraph more one other thing that you can do is like right after the heading since this is a good uh like long paragraph what i can do is i'll write the article tag right so this better this helps the browser better understand that this is somewhat something like an article which has different section which has different paragraphs right and i can create section like this you can directly use div there is much not much of a difference between this tag and the div tag okay but this helps the browser understand the different sections of your site right these tags are semantic semantic tags right it gives your site more meaning that's all it is okay so and I actually write, I can just write part of the text here. If I just cut and paste this whole P thing right here in this section, and then I create another section. So I've created two sections in the about me, right? So this is about me section, right? If I full screen this, you'll see this is what it looks like now after this article let's say i want a line that separates this right so there is an hr tag right uh, here you can see the description the hr element represents a parallel level thematic break so actually let's, let's just see what it does so you'll see that there is a line that is created let's actually full screen and see there is a line that it's a break that it's created after the uh, this right so this is what hr tag does it creates a break after the element okay now yeah, after this it. let's create another yeah. div like the first div is over let's create another or you can just name it section it doesn't really matter right now i'll introduce you to an attribute called as id right you can use this id to later you can use ids to target an element but that's something we'll learn later 
for now we'll use ids to just make it easier for us to understand what this section is for so for example right now i'll just write likes dislikes right as the name suggests we'll just write a likes right so i'll first give a title i'll write maybe my favorite movies right and now this has to be a list right since i'm not writing just one thing so there is something called a ul tag this is basically unordered list the ul right and in a list each element is represented by an li tag this is an unordered list ul there is also an ordered list but we'll talk about this right after this right so in li when you write something like um, my favorite movies i'll write forest comp right so when i see this so you'll see my favorite movies and then it comes in like this right <clears throat> this bullet point a point is already generated we can change the style for that bullet point later but for now this is what the list does right <clears throat> now actually i don't think this looks good what i'll do is i'll change the heading to likes and dislikes right and in that i'll just make this as paragraph tag <laughs> i think that will be much better right so my favorite movies forest comp i'll just give interstellar and i'm just writing random names all right i don't really have that much of preference and a favorite movie or anything so the third movie i'll just write let's say I don't know Harry Potter and the uh, of blood friends okay so that's one list right what we'll do is create another list let's say we'll give the title as my favorite fruits I know it's kind of boring but it will take right so now we'll give an ordered list okay we want it as in a sequence one two three in a numbered fashion right so now you'll still just write li you'll be given the number automatically for example if i write let's say mango on the post and if i see it you'll see that one this number is automatically given by this ol tag right so even the next time when you write something like i don't know apple all you did was write li but the numbers will be given accordingly right depending on the list item right so this is how you can create lists automatically you can change this styling for bullets later i'll show you how that uh, how to do that in the css class but for now that's how you create lists right the ordered list and unordered list and these are how you can create comments in the html uh, file right ordered list and unordered list okay so ordered and unordered list now i'll give an hr again to separate that section right so see now you can see the clear, clear distinctions between each section now let's create another section i'll give it an id of let's say qualifications if you are a professional then maybe you can write experiences right it doesn't really matter what i want to show you next is i'll first write the heading now what i want to show you is the table tag how to create tables in html right so as the name suggests the tag will be table now in that tab in html all you have to do is define a row right so first you can define a row by writing tr right so in the first row for any table in the the first row is for the table titles or write the heading right so in the first row what we'll write is something like table heading right 
so i'll write th and the heading should be let's say sr number should be the first column okay the next should be the next heading should be let's say name of institution institution type of qualification will be the third column qualification in third column and let's say marks slash cgpa slash grade in the fourth column all right if i see this you'll see that it's something like this sr number name of institution type of qualification in this but it's not really clear right so for it to be clear for it to have borders and things like that you can just specify the attribute in the table tag itself so anything that goes here is called attribute okay so i'll write border so if i do that you'll see that you have been given a default border if i write a number like if i write five the borders width will increase as you can see right now you'll see that the table is spanning only this length right what if i want it to spread across the entire width so for that i'll write width now that we have changed the width of the width of the table let's enter some dummy data right so first is our sr column right so we'll write according and corresponding mm -hmm. to these column names right so first data point should be an sr number we'll get the first one then we'll write the name of the institution let's say modern school and the next is type of qualification my ssc or hsc right hsc and i got 89 percent <laughs> so yeah that's one qualifications that i have you can just i can just duplicate it again so you'll be able to see much more clearly so if i open it you'll see that the data has been entered right now see the problem is these uh, columns are being divided equally but see marks and qualifications are so, uh, small columns right so we want them to have smaller widths but we can customize that as well by the width attribute that i showed you earlier so you can specify that right here in the heading tag all right so what i'll do is i'll just give width tag to all of them and the sr number should have only 10 percent width let's say and the name of the institution should actually let's give 10 portion to this 10 portion to this and the 70 portion to this right now if we see this you'll see that the name of institution is being given the 70 portion width, width of the table okay now you can also specify the width in pixel like if i wanted to be 70 pixels i can just write 70 pixels but in this case i'm says specifying the portion in other three so it's automatically uh, giving it the 70 portion but you can use pixels to specify it okay now that's how you use tables how to customize tables how to change that border we'll learn all that in the css class not now okay now moving on let's create another section right now this will be uh a form let's create to get you familiar with forms let's create a contact me section okay so a contact us yeah contact me since this is a profile page i uh, will just write contact me okay we'll give a heading first right contact me right now we'll create a form for the user to submit okay so we have a form tag if you see nothing will happen here nothing will show because we haven't really written inside anything right now form has basic two tags that you have to remember the first is the label and you can actually before that i'll just show you the first is the input tag all right now in any form that you have seen you have to write the input right for example if a form asks you for your email id you have to type in the email id right so that's one kind of input right so in the input you have to specify what type of input input that you want so you have a type attribute in here you can specify for example if you want a text feed or you have email or you maybe you want password right we'll see what you what each of these does for example for now we'll just write a text and 
will write name as just I guess username okay and then we'll close it like this okay so that's one input when I open it you'll see that there is a input field right here I can type my text right now I can input that text but right now we don't know what this input field is for right how will we convey that to the user there are two things that you can do first is you have you can specify a placeholder attribute so what this will do is enter your name right so now when I see it in the grayish text you see a placeholder instead of the default empty input field right so that's what this placeholder attribute does another thing you can do is you can create a corresponding label tag right so for example if I write label and to connect it to the input below you'll write you'll create a for attribute and give it the same name as the input field right this will connect that label with this input okay so now I'll close this and in between I'll write name okay so now you'll see I have the name and then an input field so it basically specifies that it's using this right if I wanted to be uh, if I want the input field to be in the next line I can just give a break tag that's one way to use it right you'll see other ways to do the same thing later one input for name let's also create one input for email so i'll write here email email and here email as well and in the type of the input i'll specify it to be email right enter your email or you can directly specify something like uh, Arch and raid s.com or something right so you'll see that it's being shown here now you can type in anything but so now you have an input field for an email right now you won't see the use of why how it is different from the type text field but when you try to submit this form you'll see if it's not a valid email you'll show it will show an error right now we don't have a submit button so you won't be able to tell the difference but we'll do that in just a moment right now to put this email in in the next line we'll just give a break uh, tag i'll just write the break tag here it's kind of a bad practice to do it like this but for now we'll just do it anyways once again we'll provide a break tag here right now let's see we'll create some buttons okay now we want let's say radio button right so you'll see this radio button is created so you can remove this and let's say choice one which domain do you like right so i'll have radio buttons right now now what you'll have to do is create labels label and inside the label so we'll give the label as um, let's see we'll first give the input we'll write the type to be radio button right radio button is that circular checkbox right then now we'll write choice one we also have to give in the value attribute when you are actually submitting the form but for now we'll just leave it empty and that's it now what we have to give a text right to let the user know what this uh, signifies right so i'll just write let's say web development right so this is how it looks like right now it feels like the radio button is connected to that label so the next thing you can do is just create another label like this and you can write machine learning machine learning and create another label which you can write artificial or maybe just android development right so now you have options right and the thing to note is that for now we are only able to select one of these radio buttons right and that is because the name 
of all of these radio buttons is the same if you do it differently like if you change all of this what will happen is now you'll be able to select all three of them because now they are not connected right so now you, you know how to use this now instead of a radio button what you can do is you can also give a checkbox right there are a lot of types that you can get familiar with over time right you can also just search for input type html and just go to the w3 schools website you have all these input types here you can play with every single one of them like for example i can just create an input let's type as let's say time and close it and you'll see i'll be able to select time using this right so there are a lot of input types that you can play around with but for now let's just discuss one more that is a text area okay and one thing to remember is that text in text area you'll have to use the closing tag all right if you do just this it won't work so you have to use the closing tag and if you see it right now this is how it is being shown you have to specify the rows and columns for how long it should be right so let's say 20 columns and here you can see i've provided two attributes rows and columns to the text area and now i'll close this so here if you see it now you'll see that you have created a text box right you can also give a label to that for now let's say the label is message right so whatever the message you want to write while contact contacting you can write it right here and we'll give in the br type for now and i want to reduce the number of rows i'll keep it five okay and i'll increase the columns to let's say 40. now that looks a bit better so now you have created a contact form but one thing missing from this is a button right so after the user has filled in all the information you want to submit that form so you'll create a button with type submit right and then you just you can add whatever you want in that button and that will be shown right here and you can give a br tag right this will give push it to the next line this is a basic form that you have created right so you can play around with this and i'll show you one error like in this field we can write text but in this field i cannot write text because it's an email so you'll see please include one at the rate in the email address so this is the default validation because we have provided the type as email in that input right so yeah that's one thing now let's give an hr before this form section so yeah now that's better and after this section we will give an hr as well okay now i'll discuss one last tag before we go off i guess this is how to embed a video inside a site the, this is a question that i have been asked a lot and i recently create, created a project using this so i'll just show you how to embed a youtube video for now so there is a tag called iframe okay now this tag is basically used to embed a web page inside our website okay so a youtube video itself has a url right so it's kind of a web page in its own so if you want to em embed something like that if you want to maybe embed an html file itself in our site you have to use uh, the iframe tag right so for now i'll just write iframe then we have to provide the uh, the source right and let's close it for now and the source will be a youtube video for now let's this is my this was my last video where i shared how to get premium courses from coursera right so we'll just try to embed this right so i'll copy the video url and i'll just write it here let's see if this works so here you'll see that a frame is created but it's not showing a video so we'll try to inspect whenever something like this happens try to see in the console if an error is being printed right so nothing is being shown so there is no error but it's still not loading right so 
a simple way to solve this error is by changing this URL a bit. For example, I'll just change it to youtube.com slash embed. Okay. Now, if I see, if I reload the site and actually check it, you'll see that the video is now loaded. I'll just give a heading to this section, for example, watch my latest video. Okay. And I also give an HR, right? So if I reload the site again, watch my latest video and with an HR, what you can do is just give an align attribute, align it in the center. I think making it in the center will feel much better, right? So as you can see, it looks better. I'll specify a width of 500 pixels and a height of let's say 480 pixels right you can customize this on your own you can use percentage sign as well oh, okay i'll reduce the height to 300 pixels we'll see the changes now and that looks much better okay now in the last column let's actually write this will be i'll give it an id of socials okay as the name suggests we'll provide our links right here okay so for now let's write first create a small heading we'll write socials right and let's create a list a simple list like this and write li now for you to embed a link inside a website you have to use something called an anchor tag okay so the basic syntax for an anchor tag is like this an a tag with an href okay and here you'll provide the link to whatever the resource is okay and inside this tag you can write the title you want right so like for example let's say i want to show my linkedin profile or let's say i want it to be my youtube channel link okay so i'll just copy I just copy it from my channel okay and I'll paste it in the href attribute so when now when we open our site we'll and load it once so our social is not being shown here right that's an error we'll see what we can do to fix it now let's go to our code and let's see the error is after we created this section right uh, everything after this uh, this section cannot be seen so one thing you can do is just close this and you'll close the iframe like this this should probably solve the error if i reload the site now you'll see the socials is being shown and when i click on this youtube you'll see my site is directed to the channel link right so that's how you can embed links in your site right now uh, there is a attribute in anchor tags that you should get familiar with you can write target and right now when I click on it the YouTube site is being loaded on the same page right but what if we wanted to, op to open in another page right another tab or maybe another page as well so for that you use the target attribute if you wanted to open in another tab what you'll write is just write blank okay so when i click on this now you'll see that now a new tab is being opened instead of opening the link in the same page okay so you can provide links like this right here i'll just add two more links like so i've pasted the link for all three of them and that is how you can embed anchor links in a site okay so i think we have covered most of the tags that you will need or actually you won't even need this many tags if you're just beginning your career right if you're just if you have just started learning web development this is more than enough to get you started and you can build much like most of the projects that you'll see right and we, we will be building those projects we'll build uh, clones like instagram clones spotify clone etc and you'll see that most in most of them will just be using these tags okay uh, now before we go, I'll just give one tag or just one more. All right, let's at the top of our page It'll be nice if I have my photo, right? So what we'll do is 
just below the heading i'll give an img tag img tag as the name suggests it's used to embed an image in our file right in a html file okay in the source you can write a url if you have if you have it in the local file you can just give the local link so for now i'll just provide a url here and if i open the site now you'll see my photo is being shown here okay so that's okay i'll first align it to the center as well right that's wrong spelling i'll align it to the center nothing happens okay i guess align attribute doesn't work in this case but it's fine for now i'll just what we can do is though write a section right create a section shift this h1 tag and image both inside that section and give the align center item to the section itself right so if we see now the heading and the image both of them are contained inside the section so they are centered okay that's one way of solving that problem all right and the best practice is to give like a description or just the image title here in the all tag because if there is a person with disability right he can't he or she is using a screen reader software or something like that they will uh, read this alt attribute right instead of seeing things right so that's why it's better to provide alt tag and i'll write profile picture here for now okay so these are the two important tags while you're using an image so that's the basic website that we created today okay now we are done with the coding of the html site that's our entire site right right there okay we have structured it in a very neat way right we have the hr tags and we have different sections of the website very clear okay now the next step is to deploy and host this site using github okay we'll keep it very simple since we only have one html file so we only have this one html file in a project folder right so we won't make it complex if you don't know how to use github that's totally fine let's first jump to a let's first close our server okay now the next thing is next what i want you to do is go to the github site github.com right and just create an account if you don't have one sign up or sign into your account and i'll just open mine so this is my github account okay now you'll have your own account like this you can go here and check your repositories now i'll click on the repositories section and here you'll have a new option or if you are opening the home site you'll also you'll see a page like this and here you'll also have the new section right so this new button basically creates a new repository up project in a github is basically called a repository right so here you'll uh i'll give it a name html my profile okay that's the project name that i want to give description of basic html site a basic resume html resume html site that's uh, you can give a description but it's not mandatory right now you can directly click on create repository to create your project and host it on the github right it's that simple okay so now a project is created uh, that the name is this and you'll have that description so these are they have provided steps right if you want to uh send your local files to this uh hosted project you can do this by following these following steps but for now we don't need anything like that we just have to upload that one single html file right so for now we'll keep it very simple we'll up, uh, upload an existing file right we'll drag and drop our website by 
which I have right here the profile.html I'll just drag and drop here and uh, every change in github is called a commit right and whenever you are committing it's better it's mandatory to give a message right so for now I'll just write uh, HTML file HTML file for the site okay and I'll write commit changes that means like save changes right so now that site uh, the uh, so now the HTML file is uploaded on my github in my repository which I created just now okay so now that I have this hosted the next step is to deploy it right how to create and how to host this HTML file so first step is go to the settings in your repository then locate this pages uh, tab right click on it and you'll see something like this so this source you have already it's already selected deploy from branch and then in the branch you'll select the main branch okay because our code here if you see it's in the main branch this main branch can uh, already has our html file so we'll do that we'll select the main branch and we want to uh, we'll click on save so what it will do is it will start deploying uh, the html file on a domain okay so your github pages site is currently being built from the main branch so it's building right now uh, it's building the site for us okay it's hosting it on the internet okay so we'll wait for a few minutes depending on how much time it takes so after the site is done being deployed you'll see something like this okay so when you click on visit site so we have a 404 not found error so the problem is very simple if this is your site make your file name case matches the url uh you must provide an index.html file so the problem is that in our code we have given profile.html right instead the what it's doing is the github is searching for a file called index.html directly so our error is basically the file name okay so once again what i'll do is i'll just go into this file i'll delete this file now okay and right now my repository is empty okay there is nothing there and locally i'll change from profile to index.html okay i'll upload this directly in my github okay so i'll upload file i'll drag and drop my index.html and i'll comment the changes okay and once again we'll do the same process so what we'll do is actually the index.html file is hosted now so we'll have to redo the steps for now click on this deployed button and it will show you all the steps that happen build report build status and deploy so we'll rerun all the jobs okay we'll rerun the jobs okay this will redo the entire process and we'll wait for it to work through all these steps now uh, it took a couple of minutes but all three steps are done build the status and the deployment as well when we click on this url now you'll see that the site is hosted okay so you have this url right here the site is hosted directly on this url you can share this site with your friends and my suggestion is whenever you create a project it's better to host it so that it anyone can access it's not just uh, present in your local folder sitting on your local computer and only you can see it right it's better to host it on the internet so that anyone can see it and anyone can see that uh, see the work that you've done right so yeah that's it i think uh, we've covered the all the topics that i said i would so i think we've covered all these topics that we discussed in the start of the video so we'll be ending this video right here in the next video in the next video we'll uh, learn css and next to that we'll learn javascript as well and we'll create uh, much more advanced projects okay that's it for this video and thank you guys for watching.